Explain to us who their world are. What is it? Uh, their world is a charity set up by Sarah Brown, um, the wife of former Prime Minister Gordon Brown. And it's a charity that focuses on education and putting, uh, helping like refugee children get into education. Mm. And so far they've been very successful. They've got a quarter of a million people, uh, children into school in Lebanon. Um, but there's 680,000 children that still need to get into school, which is what I'm trying to sort out. And, and this all comes off the back of, of a bit of a broken promise, doesn't it, actually? Yeah, so two years ago, um, the government leaders met at this UN summit um, in, on behalf of the Syrian conflict, and they pledged to get a million refugee children into school by the end of that, that year, um, which would have been the end of 2016. Um, and they pledged all this money. And there's a plan all set up to get the kids into school. There's a structure set up by their world, which works. I've been to a school that it's running in. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, there's only like a third of the children that have got into school because the money hasn't actually been handed over. Is that right? It is easy to make wow. these promises, isn't it? And, uh, Not deliver, and then hope yeah. that maybe it'll get brushed. But it's horrible, the, the promising quiet. children. Yeah. yeah. You know, these children have had a broken promise. That's not nice. Yeah. And so, obviously, we could see there in the, in the video that you went. What was your experience like? The experience in the camps, it's, it really puts things into perspective. You know, it's kind of like we have it so lucky here in England. You know, some of the parents were saying that if life stays the way it is, they might as well just die now, which is... Horrible, That's horrific. You know? and, and, the, and, the, and the fact is, is that those that are not in education are vulnerable to, to, to God knows what, really. I mean, it's, it's a horrible thought, isn't it? Yeah, like the children, you know, some of them are getting put into forced child marriage, which is wrong on all accounts. Um, and you've got some of the children will end up homeless. But then worst case, I think, is that militia groups will try to take advantage of the children mm. and manipulate them into becoming the thing that we don't want to happen in this world. Mm. You know, um, we don't want but not them type of people to be kind of ru ru ruining the world like they have been doing. Yeah. What sort of follow-up are you going to do then? Are you going to go back? Um, hopefully I'll go back in the future, definitely. I want to see these kids and get them into school. But the first thing I'm going to do is I've made this documentary, which you've seen, it's a short film called 72 Hours, because there's 72 hours before the government leaders meet again in Brussels. And I'm going to go there personally hopefully having millions of people watch this video. So go on to my Instagram or my, um, my Twitter, Dynamo Magician, the video link's right there. Mm -hmm. Watch the video, sign the petition, and then everyone, you know, all the, everyone signs the petition, watches the video, and I'll go there with an army of support mm -hmm. so that we can remind these world leaders that there's an unfulfilled promise that they need to deliver on. When, you, were, when you went out there, did you do any magic for the kids? Oh, I did a little bit of magic, yeah. Did you? Um, yeah, I've, I've not been doing as much because of my, you know, because of my condition at the minute. But yeah. I did, I did my best to amaze them, and they were loving it. I was like oh, the Pied Piper walking around the oh, refugee yeah. camp. Bet you were. I'm and how are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You know, like I say, going to the camps, it kind of really puts things into perspective. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what I'm going through is nothing compared to how they have to live. And you know, and also I, I try not to let myself be defined by my illness sure. and just, yeah. just try and get on with stuff. It, it's a, it surprised. I think it surprised everybody because you've been very public about having Crohn's and the, and the effect that it's had on you. But I think for the for the first time, um, we could see this effect. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and how, how it had affected you. Look, is, is that the first time it had happened to you, that it got this bad? It, I've had certain episodes like this when I was a bit younger and I wasn't necessarily in the public eye. Um, but, yeah, this is the first time where I've been so bad that I've needed to have certain medication that has caused an actual physical change yeah. in yeah. my body, yeah. which it got to a point where people... You, you, it was too hard to hide and too hard to ignore. And, you know, people taking photos of me and then, you know, um, people online saying, oh, look, he's let himself go. Um, so I, I wanted people to know the real story from me before they heard it Because sometimes people don't understand. Else. They, they don't realise how cruel they're being. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't really take things personally too much, you know. Yeah. I, I just get on with it, you know. Um, and so how does it affect your magic then? Because I know you've got your tour, haven't you? You're going to New Zealand. But I've you've got had South to... Africa tour and New Zealand, yeah. So you, you know. but you've had to adjust that slightly. So, so why, why is that? Um, there's certain physical things that I can't do. I've got arthritis because of the Crohn's disease now, right. which we're trying to deal with, and it's kind of spread to different parts of my body, so my hands and my forearms, my knees. So there's certain things in the show that are a bit more physical that I might not be able to do, 
Uh, some days are better than others, mm. so I've got some backup plans just in case to change the show. I I'll, bet it I'll makes adapt. you slightly have to think outside the box, does it? Yeah. But it's good to... though. I like it. It's yeah. causing me to think of new magic ideas, um, not just for, the, for my live show, but also for new ideas for maybe for TV in the future. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, I'll, I won't count me out just yet. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone's what does, what doing that. What does this actually mean then for your, for your, all your fans? What does it mean for your future? Is this something you're dealing with now and they can get you back to some sort of working model? Or, or is this what life is like? I mean, that's the plan, but, you know, life throws things at you and the way I see it, you know, you get obstacles put in your way and you can choose to let them stop you or you can choose to try and go through them and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm.